Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So I got a ton of video questions about what do I do after the campaign? I'm following your Righteous Fire build. It's my first time playing Path of Exile. So I just recently restarted in SSF. So uh, this character has been played now for like 10 hours. I've been really sloppy with it. But the point still stands that this is a great character to kind of introduce people into the end game of Path of Exile. So once you kill Katawa, I'd say the first thing that you want to do is type slash passives and make sure you have anywhere from 23 to 24 passives. The reason being is each one of these quests gives you a skill point. The only one that's kind of like a little bit flexible is deal with the bandits. You can choose to help the bandits. You can choose to kill the bandits. So if you don't kill all the bandits, it'll say zero. So for in this, in this instance, I took movement speed. I recommend Oak for people who play the build though. So from here, you're going to have this giant atlas. And you're not going to really be able to see much of it. So as you can see here, I'm like 30 of 115. And essentially, when you hover over a map, it's going to have a bonus objective. So if you hover over, like, say, a Dunes map, which is a tier 2, it says bonus kill boss of magic or higher version of this map. So TLDR, if it's a white map, you want to go ahead and use your transmutes and your alterations. If it's a yellow map, you need to alk it. Um, you can also use bindings as a pseudo form of alking. And then once you're at red maps, you have to also corrupt, but that's a different story and we're not really going to get there. So let's get started with what you actually do. So in my map tab here, if you guys have this tab, you see this line? This line means that I've already completed this map before. So I'm not going to worry about running these line ones, right? One interesting strategy that you can do is you'll notice here for T2 maps, I don't have Carcass and I don't have Tropical Island. However, I do have three siege maps. There is a chance when vendoring the siege that I get a tropical island because this is the process known as three for one. Uh, if you have, say, four of them, you could actually shuffle so you could pull one map, map, uh, map out, put another one in, and then see what that gets you. So I'm going to grab this tropical island. I'm going to go ahead and use a transmutation on it, and I don't really care about anything else. I'm not map juicing. I don't want to alk. All I'm trying to do right now is get my bonus objective on tropical island. If I search here tropical, tropical is going to be right down here. All right, so now that this map is good, I'm not touching anything on the map device. Again, the whole purpose of this right now is just getting completion. We're trying to make our characters stronger. We're not ready to tackle strong content yet, right? So as for this, I'm currently on my end or my basically my level 80 hides non armor gear. If you are going to be on the campaign filter, you're going to see a lot more loot. As for what you pick up, I'll go ahead and talk about my items. Now, do note that as I'm going to be mapping here, you'll notice I'm not trying to kill every pack of mobs. If you want to do that, you absolutely can. So in this instance, I'm just going to pick up the League Mechanic mob, or, or uh, the event, and then I'm pretty much going to skip. If it's not a rare pack or a magic pack, so that would be yellow or blue, I'm going to skip it. Uh, and by rare pack, I just mean like a rare mob because you don't actually have like packs of rare mobs. Okay, so that's been completed, and I'm going to move on. I, cannot... I do, have, however, have my uh, Syndicate, which is my Betrayal, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And people always ask me how you do this, um, so I will just explain. I don't care who goes where, I just click random buttons, and I get loot. The only exception here is uh, I try to get them level 3, and then when they're level 3, I put them on the bench. And I'll explain that in two seconds. Okay, so... Aku is one, Elrion is one, that doesn't mean anything to me, so that just means that I'm going to interrogate. And you, we will just all prisoners set free, 32 Mastermind Intelligence. Mastermind Intelligence is Katarina, so we're just going to click that. Boom. Now there's a glorious play, and you might wonder why am I not picking that up. My body armor is 5-linked. Because my body armor is 5-linked, I am literally not going to pick up a single body armor, unless it's a 5-link or a 6-link. There are maybe some exceptions, but the, the reality is if you identify a good body armor, do you really want to drop a link? Probably not, right? Okay, so if you look here, we have a 1 and a 3. What does that mean? 3 means I can interrogate because it builds up the most intelligence. And then this guy, whatever, I don't care. See you later. Suffix of the Veil. Thanks to your... And then unveiling is quite literally just taking the stuff you haven't gotten before, but you can also get some pretty decent stuff from unveiling. Okay, let's go ahead and move onward. I'll, I'll talk more about my gear here in a second and probably like the next part. 
Betrayal is a wonderful form of XP and offers very good gear for pretty early on into the game, I would say. What I like to do with Chieftain when I know I'm close to the map boss, which is around now, I want to just blitz the boss and see if I can get an explode proc with the rare mobs. Actually, here's a transportation event, so here's the- okay, the boss got one shot, see you later. And then we have transportation, let's go see. Okay, Chimera, two-star, bargain. Don't tell the syndicate I told you. Okay, so. This is what I picked up from that map, so basically nothing, right? I'm gonna get rid of the six sockets, and then I'm gonna unveil this ring. So this ring has, uh... So it's not even that bad. It's got life, dexterity, fire res, and then you could take, like, hold in chaos, for example. I'm just going to take this just so it's done. But it's actually not bad of a ring, right? For just starting. Check the gloves. Gloves don't have anything. This fizz to fire does not convert damage you take. It's damage you deal, so we never use that. Okay, so now it's important to look at my gear. And this is where you can actually compare the, the character to the path of building one for one and see what to improve on. So my weapon, for example, is not that good. It has a little bit of dot multi and a little bit of fire damage. And in fact, I think I can actually craft uh, damage over time. Let's see. Do I have that prefix? Is it undiscovered? Uh, damage over time. I actually need to run shore map. Okay. So that's that tells me that's what I need for that. All right. So I'm currently running here a life tap punishment. My links are going to be all over the place because remember, when you're gearing up, in SSF or just like day one of a league, you, you can't follow a POB exactly, meaning like, oh, the Scepter has three red, I need three red. Doesn't always work like that, right? So here we have Life Tap, Punishment, Purity of Elements. I did get a really nice helmet. Uh, I just straight up identified this, and the reason I can tell it's nice is it has that big percent life regen roll with while also having decent armor and life. Percent increased life regen rate is a multiplier to all of your regen. And later on, I can harvest swap the cold res to fire, which is pretty cool. So very nice helmet. This is where my fire trap is right now. So fire traps with affliction trap and mine life tap. Later, I will even remove the armor and craft plus one gems. So fire trap gets another plus, And that, of course, comes from betrayal. Over here, we got lucky. Drop the rise of the phoenix. I'll be using the rise of the phoenix for a while. Speaking of rise of the phoenix, you'll notice my res is 88, 80, and 80. This screams that we need to do our uber lab because our uber lab is basically going to make it so that um, we can take Velaco, and then our max res goes up by 8%. So eight max cold, eight max lightning, and then we can work on 90 all. Body armor is not very good, but it is a solid five link. The colors look fucked up right now because I don't have chromes this early into the game to get the appropriate colors. So I'm using a weak link called less duration, which does work because of life tap. Um, over here, you can see a prime example of a ring I unveiled with Betrayal. Tier 1 life, and then it has the cold and chaos. Yeah, it would be as better as fire, but it's still good. And then it has like a 42 dexterity roll, which helps so much with gear pressure on Righteous Fire. Um, over here is just like a 100 life dual res ring. And I have, you can tell this was also unveiled. It's got T1 life, and then it's unveiled with uh, area of effect and area damage. And then I crafted fire and chaos. Gloves pretty much just have that life regen roll, very similar to the helmet, nothing crazy. Over here, I've got faster attacks, life tap, shield charge, and burn damage. Burn damage is just leveling. Um, belt, basically a T3 life roll with a fire res roll. And then my boots, which have 30 MS and some fire res in life. Here we've got Blood Rage, Frost Blink, Summon Stone Golem, and Enduring Cry. So pretty much, like I said, you can look at the gear and start comparing it to the POB and say, how do I get better gear from here, right? A lot of this comes with crafting tips on my website, pox.net slash crafts. Um, and then, of course, in Tradely, you could buy cheaper alternatives. However, when it comes to our Atlas, here is what I'm currently doing. Very similar to my League start. So, you can see I took Chance at Betrayal because A, tons of XP, B, really good gear, C, um, fills up Katarina, which is also good for unveils and everything else. So, overall, big fan of Betrayal. Then I'm filling in my Kirak missions, and a reason to take the Kirak missions and the map nodes... The map nodes help me drop better maps, so higher tier maps to keep climbing. And the Kirak ones are very interesting because if you go to Kirak over here, you can actually buy maps from him. So like I don't have Belfry, I don't have Defile, well actually I did do Defile Cathedral, I don't have Racecourse, 
I don't have Coral Ruins. I don't have Basilica. So you can actually buy out his maps, and then you can just come over here and run a Kirak mission, and his entire shop will refresh. And this is how I can kind of juggle my map completion in SSF by forcing Kirak. And the main thing I get gated by, ironically, in the early game are like chance orbs and alchemy. So picking up all of those and not using them for crafting just at the beginning is a very good way to kind of progress. Anyway, I hope that that gave you guys a little bit of direction and helped you guys out. Please let me know in the comments down below. You can see that this character has quite literally the, the bare bone base tree. So it's exactly like the POB. So I'm going to catch you guys all later. Thanks everyone so much for watching. If you had a question, feel free to drop it down below. And also don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Before I go though, there is one more place I just want to plug. Uh, this is because I'm kind of getting bombarded on my stream. So if you come over here to this quick flashbang, it's just a Google Doc, which if you use the RF help command in my stream, it'll see it. Basically, just going to tell you, come to my website, search your questions here box.net slash crafts or crafting tips global 911 in game and path of exile you can communicate with other rf players it's it's our own global chat uh, my personal discord the rpg vault which is another discord which is the poe vault basically discord slash uh, rpg vault anyway hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves and i'll see you guys all tomorrow take care everybody